Hi, I'm Shoestring Jane. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things thrifty, frugal and money saving. And today I thought I would use some store cupboard ingredients to cook a favourite recipe of ours. It's called Red Dragon Pie and it's from this very old book, The Vegetarian Kitchen by Sarah Brown. It's a BBC book. It was a BBC TV series. Um, and I've been cooking it for years. I think all of my family cook it as well. It happens to be vegan or almost vegan. It depends how you make it. Um, I like to eat a lot of vegetarian food. I don't eat a lot of meat. I'm not a massive meat fan. I can't eat a full vegan diet. If I ate like this all the time, I would really struggle because I have IBS and it would it does aggravate it. But I do like to eat like this occasionally. I tend to use meat these days more as a garnish than the main event. And Justin really likes meat, so that does mean that we we eat meat when we're eating together. But um more often than not, I'll go for fish rather than meat. I just don't really, I'm not a big fan. I was a vegetarian for a long time and I think if my stomach would allow, I would happily be a vegetarian again and mostly vegan. Um, I will show you how I made it and you can see if you like it. And I'll also put in the description box below a link to the recipe. Here we go. So I'm gonna make red dragon pie and it's from this book. It's a really old book. Vegetarian Kitchen by Sarah Brown. If you're vegetarian or if you're not vegetarian, I'm not vegetarian, I find this really, really excellent book. It's got lots of quite cheap recipes because when you don't use meat, they, things tend to be cheaper anyway, don't they? So, but this is a favourite. I put this on my blog, Red Dragon Pie, and I must get more views on this one than anything else. I thought I would share it. So, no dragons are going to be killed in the course of making this pie. It's like a it's like a veggie shepherd's pie is the best way to describe it. Um, and I'll show you what I'm going to put in the recipe. So the crucial bit is the aduki beans. So the recipe actually calls for dried aduki beans. I don't, I haven't seen them really. I'd, I suppose if I went to the health food shop, I'd find them. These are hard enough to track down actually. And you can make this with any pulses really. But when I see these, I'll tend to buy a couple for this recipe. Um, dried beans, I used to use dried beans. I think they use a lot of energy to to cook, although I do have my instant pot, so I could actually do them in there now. Um, but they take a lot of energy, they take a lot of time, you have to think about soaking the day before and that kind of thing, and I wouldn't use them often enough, so they, they wouldn't, they deteriorate really before I could use them. The other things you want for this recipe are a, an onion, which I am going to use, I don't really eat onions, but it is better in this recipe, some carrots, some tomato puree, some dried mixed herbs, some dark soy sauce, a bit of salt and pepper and some oil, potatoes, I don't know if I've got enough potatoes, so I might add a bit of sweet potato to it. And the other thing that it does call for is some rice, but I'm not going to cook rice especially for this. If I had some leftover rice, I would use it, but instead I'm just going to use more of the aduki beans than the recipe calls for. So anyway, I'll show you what's what. The other thing I'll probably do actually is add um, a vegetable stock cube to this. I fried the onion for five minutes before adding the diced carrots. I then tipped in the aduki beans. Make sure to get everything out of the bottom of the can. And then I added two tablespoons of soy sauce. and two tablespoons of tomato puree. It's just a, just a teaspoon of mixed herbs, dried mixed herbs. We mixed it all together. And now I'm adding in the stock and I'm going to bring it to the boil. I 
decided to add, add the rice at this point because it looks like it's going to be quite liquidy otherwise. Um, that will cook while this is the rest of it's cooking. It needs about half an hour because it's going to be too far too runny at the moment anyway. So the rice will cook at the same time. So that will work okay. I'm going to get the potatoes on now while that's doing. That's pretty much ready now. So it's got a mincy sort of texture and the rice is cooked as well so that's good. I've seasoned it as well, it needed a bit of salt and pepper. So I'm just waiting for the potatoes and I'll boil, I'm boiling those and I'll mash them up and add them. It's very melted this butter because it is very hot. Let's just mash up the potatoes. I actually did more potatoes than Sarah Brown says to in her recipe because I don't think they're enough. We think if you're serving four people you need a good lot of mash so I added one and a half pounds of potatoes rather than a pound that she says I can't remember what that is in grams 750 grams would that be um and I, even then I think I could do more because I've got quite a lot of filling as you can see so if you wanted to and sometimes I do add grated cheese to make it like a cottage pie um if you wanted to be vegan obviously you wouldn't do that or put butter in the mashed potatoes and add a little milk as well. I always think you can add a lot more milk to mashed potato than you think that you can. It takes, it absorbs a lot and then it's creamier. Just add a bit of salt and pepper to the potatoes as well actually. I didn't need to add very much salt to the filling because it's got soy sauce in it, which is quite salty, obviously. So I've adapted this recipe slightly. I tend to do that with most recipes. I've added more potatoes. I wasn't going to add the rice and then I did, but cooked it in with the, the adoki beans. I used tinned adoki beans instead of dried. Um, what else did I do differently? I used more adoki beans than recipe says as well because I think she says something like oh I have to guess really because she's doing 150 grams of dried beans and obviously I'm using canned beans yeah, let's add the potato but I, I find that a 400 gram can of ready cooked beans seems to work quite well with the rest of the quantities that's what I normally do this is just such a great book I don't know what happened to Sarah Brown whatever happened to Sarah Brown I was asked this in my videos nobody knows what became of her the only Sarah Brown I can find was married to the politician Gordon Brown and it's definitely not her so I don't know what happened to her she did a couple of really good books I've got both of them she may have done more actually but I've got two of them and um she did a TV series, which I never watched because I didn't. I was too young, I think, at the time. It was quite a long time ago in the 80s, I think. I was too busy uh, out with my mates at that point to be worrying about cooking. Just make some peaks to um, make it a bit crispy when it goes in the oven. I'm not actually going to add any cheese to this. And there you go. So that will then go in the oven. I think it's for about 40 minutes, but I'll, I'll put a link to the recipe in the description box below. Another recipe from the same book is another favourite. It's called Layered Cashew Nut and Mushroom Roast. And it's literally, hands down, the best nut roast recipe I have ever come across. And I love a nut roast. Um, my daughter and her partner, he's vegan, they've made it vegan. So it does use an egg to bind it together, but they used, I don't know, linseed or something I think they used. Or you could use the, the liquid from a can of chickpeas, can't you, instead of an egg. Um, other than that... There's no reason why it can't be vegan. And it's such a nice nut roast, particularly for an occasion. So it goes really well when everybody else is having roast meat with roast potatoes and that kind of thing. It goes really well. It's a really good Christmas dish for a vegetarian or a vegan. So that's another good reason to try and pick up this book secondhand if you can. Um, it's just a really excellent book. I wish she would come back and kind of update it and maybe do some other books. But if anyone knows where Sarah Brown is, 
let me know in the comments. I'd love to get hold of her. Um, anyway, what are your favourite vegetarian or vegan recipes? Do you find you cook a little bit less with meat these days, especially with the prices going up as they are? Um, let me know anyway. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for lots more different videos on various aspects of money saving and frugality and cooking and trying to live a more eco-friendly lifestyle. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.